Never had mead. What? Wait, really? really? I've never. I can, actually, I take that back. I've had honey, and theoretically, it, I've had yeast, <laughs> and I've had water. <laughs> So in theory, I've had all the building blocks of uh, yeah, all the, all the parts, brother. You just let them sit together long enough to, to make anything happen. And I've existed for two weeks, two you three sound months. You like Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> Manhattans are different. Oh, that's, that's a different thing. <laughs> Suddenly, there's three of me. I'm all naked. I'm like, what's going on, bro? <laughs> Brian's naked and blue. Like, I have consumed all of the base properties of me. Making me. Don't take this the wrong way, but I'm happy to see Anthony Bonomo without any weapons. I'm pretty excited that maybe we're not gonna have to fight, but today you are teaching us about mead. I feel like we will fight because it's right. mead. I feel like mead yeah. guarantees that a fist of comfortship <laughs> will that'll be, that'll be the after show. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Anthony says, well, I did lace these with PCP, <laughs> so. So we're gonna actually make mead, which I guess is synonymous with honey wine? Yeah, basically roughly the same thing. Um, there's a bunch of different varieties of mead depending on what you put in it. Mead in its most simple form is just honey, water, yeast, and just let it sit in a dark corner for a couple weeks. And as we learned during the Pruno episode, I guess really it's just time plus uh, yeast uh, takes in sugar, poops out alcohol. Yep. And uh, in the case of the Pruno, the sugars came from the fruit juice. Uh, but in this case, I guess, I. Honey, I assume, has more sugar in it? Yes. Question mark? Yes, honey is actually really interesting. It's, I want to say, 80 plus percent sugars, which actually makes it something that's entirely shelf stable. You can, it'll last forever. It might crystallize, and if it does, you just put it in hot water. It'll dissolve back out into solution. Yeah, there were stories like, uh, like there's honey surviving all the way from ancient Egypt, like wow. two or 3,000 yeah. years ago or honey, some stuff. Honey does not go bad. Yeah. It's that high sugar content that makes it that way. So you actually need to add the water to it so the bacteria and yeast will survive because otherwise it just, nothing happens. Now the ABV percentage on mead ranges anywhere from like 3.5 to like 20. 20%? Yep. Yeah. Holy cow. It's, it's all entirely on how much initial honey there is in solution to begin with, which of course is just your initial starting sugars and the alcohol tolerance of the yeast. Now, there are a lot of different types of mead. These were made all around the world, so it's not just something that's medieval England. This oh, is yeah. really it's, all over the it's, globe. It's much longer, and they even theorize that it's one of the first fermented beverages there are, just because it is so simple and can happen you know, accidentally out in the fields, like you, you accidentally leave some honey or throw some honey in your, your water barrel or whatever, and it just kind of ferments naturally because there's natural yeast that will ferment for you. I just really wish that I had a time machine where I could go back to the discovery of mead. I'm like, why are you acting so weird? I don't know, I feel really good. I had some of that honey that was in that barrel over there. <laughs> That's been there for like three years. It's great, you gotta try it. <laughs> so when it comes to making beer, I know that it's very easy to screw up. We did some home brewing with some of the scam stuff, homebrew kits, and it is astonishing how precise everything has to be. Is mead so Similar in that regard, a little There's more loosey goosey. Room. Mead, yeah. mead, mead, and as you'll see, mead is a lot more loosey goosey. If you're looking for a specific result, you're going to need that more precise balancing everything out. However, if you're just kind of winging something together for the first time or don't really care as much about reproducing the same thing over and over again, you can kind of just throw things in a bucket and see what happens. So, if we're going to rank making mead on a difficulty level compared, you know, you got beer and wine and all that other stuff, uh, is it, mead is the easiest? Would you say? Uh, to my, to my knowledge. I've never played with wine, but looking at wine kits, there's a lot more involved in them, different things to it. Like you can literally run down to the grocery store, buy a gallon of water, a couple of pounds of honey, and even in a pinch of bread yeast and get passable meat out of it. Now you've brought two different methods to teach us. Yes. There's a really, really simple one, and then there's something to do a little bit better. Right. Okay, we're gonna try both though. Yep, absolutely. Right, let's get started. I thought you said this was simple. Right, yes. This is a potassium sorbate wine stabilizer. And this is clearly made to get like hair out of a drain. Potassium yeah. metabisulfate. Meta this is not looking right, simple. Right. This is mine. Okay. This oh, is, I see. I'm banished here. I'm going go to go to the children's table. This is you guys. Okay. 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 All right. It comes down to being able to measure more precisely and more importantly, sanitation. All this stuff. Yeah, we don't give a about sanitation. Yeah. These, <laughs> these, there's no contaminants. It's sealed. It's clean. You know what you're getting into. You know what you're getting out of it. This is not clean. This has been out and used repeatedly, so I'll need to sanitize it with some of this. I'm going to be doing some very proper oral pipetting, oral oral siphoning, so I need to clean Sounds the sexy. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm in. Just like, just like siphoning gasoline. Now, is that before <laughs> or after we make the mead? <laughs> a little column A, a little column B. Right on. 
<laughs> so a lot of this is cleaning stuff. Um, these chemicals are later on are used to stabilize the mead so it won't ferment anymore. So once you get it down to a point where you don't want any more sugar burned off. Oh, got off. it. Otherwise, the yeast doesn't yeah. know that it's quitting time. The yeast yeah. are just, they're just going to keep on eating. Right. They'll keep on eating. At some point, they will hit a saturation where they're at the alcohol and cut solution, their own shit, basically will make them die off and stop producing and working anymore. But as soon as you kick them around Wait, a little bit. But you would want to stop that before they eat up all the sugar because you right. want the sweetness that comes in there right. originally. Hey, look at this, we're learning, we're learning. Right. So there, there are two ways of doing it. So you can over sweeten to begin with and keep an eye on it or just kind of, you know, caution the wind and see what happens and stop at a certain point. That one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> and at that point, you kind of measure it with the specific gravity or how sweet it is, how it tastes and then you put the stabilizer in to stop it. So one will stop them producing more yeast, the other will stop them from turning alcohol into I the have, sugar and alcohol. I have questions. Pretty but. sure he said specific gravity. I, okay, the fundamentals are, uh, we just need something for the yeast to eat, in this case, the sugar in the honey, Right. a place for the yeast to swim yep. and turn into the to the delicious mead. And uh, what kind of yeast are we using? This here? That, that there. Austin has a really nice homebrew store that costs all of a dollar. Ooh, nice. What is this exactly? Wine yeast. Wine oh, yeast, specifically wine yeah. yeast. Okay. And that's that's a personal preference. I like the taste that this one makes more than some other yeasts I've tried. Lots of different types you can get? Dozens, dozens, dozens. Okay. So right now we're doing really, really basic. We're just doing a simple mead. Adding your fruits, adding your spices will make your melomels or if you add... He's doing it again. The Wait, funny uh, words, sorry, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, what is melomels? It just means it's a fancy word for fruit fruit mead. Oh, for flavors. I thought those were yeah. the little candies you get. <laughs> <laughs> those are Mike and Ike's. Mike and Ike's. <laughs> Different. That's the, that's the version we do. Right. You, yeah. you can probably flavor it with a Mike and Ike. I don't know what will Put happen. hot tamales in there. There is no limit to any of this. That's What's, why it's so fun and interesting. What's some gobstopper mead. Yeah. Yeah. Nerds. Yes. <laughs> See, it's sugar. Perfect. It's extra sugar. It'll work. All right. All right, so we got the three ingredients. The yeast, the sugar, and the and the water. Uh, should, should we get like a bucket? Right. Let's get the Pruno bucket. You want the Pruno bucket? Yeah. We'll get I was, I was gonna let you guys mix in this, and we're gonna keep everything clean and sanitized. You don't have to do anything else. Oh, mix in this. That would be yeah. better. That's good. That'd be yeah. better. Way That's easier, good. no yeah. sanitation. Okay, all right. So one of the first things we need to do is sanitize the equipment, because I'm gonna actually use some of that water to make my own. Okay. So the current goal is we're gonna dump out about half of each of these buckets into mine, which gives both of us working space to dilute the honey, mix everything up, then add the yeast and top it back off. And you're not sanitizing for safety, you're sanitizing for a consistency of flavor profile because um, you don't want funky whatever bacteria is coming yes, in? Yes, okay. correct. So it's it's somewhere between safety, like so if you do this wrong, you'll wind up with really expensive vinegar. Oh wow, okay. So you need the right yeast to go in there and control everything. And what is this stuff that you're so doing? This is, this is Star Sand, it's a very standard generic sanitizer used in any of the homebrew stuff. Okay, it's colored suspiciously like some versions of mead. Right, so you, you just can, make you can sure try he doesn't, some. I think it's, just I think make sure he doesn't say <laughs> drink it. <laughs> don't drink anything so, that looks like mead. So simple, simple directions are you can use an ounce to, to sanitize five gallons. This is like in the two gallon realm. Okay. So I'm gonna use like quarter ounce, if that, scroll on the bottom, sanitize this, sanitize my tube, sanitize my specific gravity meter, which we'll talk about, and the other equipment as well. Yeah, the specific gravity meter, if I remember correctly, you take a measurement at the beginning and then a me measurement at the end, and the difference is what tells you what the right. alcohol how much, how much sugar has gotcha. disappeared, absolutely. Right. Dump some of that in, add some water. So you're just washing everything out? Yeah. Lots of bubbles now. Yep. So I'm just gonna add anything I want sanitized, which is pretty much everything, because it's not gonna hurt anything. Oh, and you're just gonna, you're gonna dump everything, it shake in there, it up yeah. a little bit. I know you guys are all about your proper methods of everything. We're all, oh, yeah. we're, we're all set on our yeah. side. I don't know why yeah, you're taking so long. I mean, look at all this science that's happened <laughs> right? in the past. Just using the, the bottle brush here to clean out any anything that may have developed. What is this guy right here? Well, that's later. Oh. That's later. Yeah, that's you want to wager some guesses? Yeah, this is... um. Uh, Hygrometer. It feels like it's something to grab a thing. Some, oh, I bet that's what yeah? it is. Yeah? Yeah, go down and then it, uh, I don't know, hook, no, no. No. <sighs> uh, mm. I'm gonna give it a quick sanitize. Whatever it is, it's gotta be clean. It's gotta be clean, okay. Right? Everything should be clean. I'm at a loss, I don't know what it is. So. Rain's gonna dump this all out. Okay. So do you have to worry about the residue of this stuff on there? I assume it's all sterile. Um, so not really is it all sterile. It actually is good for the mead to sit in there with it. So it actually helps oh. create a protective layer. So one of the big important things after we get into the fermentation started, 
you don't want any oxygen mixing in. Mm -hmm. So this leaves a nice layer of non-oxygen between it and covers everything. And when it does, the bubbles do fully break down, it actually helps feed the yeast nutrients. So that's a very specific sterilizing agent. You're yes. not going to want to use Windex <laughs> <laughs> or, or scrubbing bubbles yeah. on there. Yeah. <laughs> this episode's gonna go off the rails. We're realizing he's making poison. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait, that was the big reveal. Yeah, yeah. This Fabuloso's got just the right mix of hydrochloric Fabuloso. acid. <laughs> Each of you pick a gallon, open it up, and dump about half into my bucket. But we're going to use the rest for our thing? Yes. All right. What are you, racing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only half. Don't overpour. That's about it. Nailed good. it. Perfect. Perfect for our level of precision. So all the meat I make is with Round Rock honey. It's a local honey, local wildflowers. I really like the flavors of it. They also have a new brand that I want to try out. So I'm going to have one of you play with this one. Good bees. Oh, do we have like a, a tasting stick or something? A tasting stick? A popsicle <laughs> stick? Those, I know. Those are kind of operations you think we run I around here. I believe those are called spoons. <laughs> We've got a tasting <laughs> stick. Something. What are you going to look Somewhere. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Just There's stick, a tasting stick. Stick. <laughs> okay. stick the finger in. Right. Oh, the poor child's <laughs> hand. <laughs> it's not a child, it's Ch child. Child. old. Oh, that's got a nice live on it. So are we gonna... I want you guys to try the difference between the two different oh, okay. types of honey. Okay. All of a sudden I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. uh, use the tasting stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like porn spot on everything. It's like been... Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. it's gift gold. <laughs> Hold on, don't, don't get in there. <laughs> I want to get. I want to. I guess I got it. Okay. So, that's, that's good. Can, can you describe how that tasted? Tasted. Uh, it tasted like honey. Yeah. It, was, it was good. It was kind of uh, earthy. It was earthy. Okay. Really sweet. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was honey. All right, now use the tasting stick <laughs> for, for this uh, round rock honey. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is actually sweeter. And uh, this one has kind of an earthier flavor to it. They're both good. I, I prefer this one. Uh, but yeah, this one, is this like a, a boutique version? Um, of actually, so they've got a bee farm in, I want to say, I think it's in Argentina. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So it's completely different, completely different, like you said, completely different flavor profile. From the other side of the world, yeah. No, there is a distinct difference between the two. So yeah, so the different meads mm -hmm. are going to be completely different as well, with no other changes. Everything else will be the same, you'll be the same yeast, same everything, just different honeys, and you'll have a completely different... <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> what? I'm gonna put the tasting <laughs> stick right over here. So these two different honeys are going to give us a different flavor profile in yes, the mead as completely well. Completely different. So uh, one of you takes the three, or one pounds of those, mm -hmm. dump into that one, and then we'll measure out three pounds of honey into oh, the other Oh, these are one. each one pound. Yes, okay, got those it. Are each okay. one pound. So I'm gonna use all three oh, of these in this ounces. one, and yep. Brian's gonna do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And gotcha. so I, am I just eyeballing this one? We, or? We oh, a nice got scale. it. Of course. Hey. Keep it. Keep it very. We well, can drop it on there first. Okay. Do I need to sample all of the bottles with? I've got to. You're welcome to. Okay. So you're gonna use about a quarter of that because a gallon of honey is 12 pounds. Blurp, blurp. So don't worry too much about getting all of it because we're going to actually mix some water into it okay. and shake it to get the dregs out. So you think this is uh, That's probably oh, just good, enough. good for now? Okay. Yeah. One pound, four ounces. Okay. Because getting all the honey out in, in one is, is One pound, a pain. six so ounces. We can put some water in, shake it up, get the rest out that way. Okay. One pound, 10 ounces. And so we're putting three pounds of honey Right. In half a gallon of water. Well, it's going to build back up to the full gallon. Six. Oh! I did oh it! Oh I messed God. it up! Oh, God. I, I, got, I almost got That's one funny. extra ounce. Is that is that a problem? No. Oh, okay. So I'm going to have about a gallon and a half. So I'm going to hand wave to about five <coughs> pounds of honey. If you're inclined, there are mead calculators online. Oh, it gives you exact ratios? Yeah. So you can plug in like, okay, my final volume is going to be a gallon of mead 
I want to use this much honey, it'll give you an estimated alcohol percentage. Like you can do this all very, very scientifically and accurately and get exactly what kind of sweetness and, and desires you're looking for. So the fourth ingredient, I guess, is thyme. Is mead substantially different in terms of the amount of time it takes to ferment? So depending on which, which you're comparing to, against like your, your beers, it's gonna be the same fermentation time, depending on how, how you treat it, how warm the environment is. Again, the yeast itself will determine its fermentation rate. Mm -hmm. um, but you're looking at generally one to two weeks, up to as long as four, if you wanted to. But after that, it, it pretty much is done and it stops. That's when you'd add your stabilizers in and just, That's probably enough. just cap it and shake it. Yeah. Yeah. You can just take the lid off. Well, that's that's what you could do. <laughs> <laughs> I have diarrhea. <laughs> Sorry. Most advertising need ever. Yeah. <laughs> With the anthropomorphic honey bottle telling everyone. Sorry everyone, I have diarrhea. <laughs> Looking pretty good, not gonna lie. Right? It's perfect. So that's wild. Like <sighs> Look at no. that perfect layer between the two. Right. Well, that's because we shook his up. Can you can you hand me the, like the drill under the uh, table there? The drill. Yep. Drill. You guys don't need it. Don't worry. The benefit of doing things the fancy way. Oh, we haven't put the yeast in here yet. Correct. So we're not going to add the yeast until we aerate the must. So the mixture of honey and water Got is it. a must. I know what it is. On hacking the system. Yeah. When we bleached the papers. Yeah and mixed them up and I kept spraying bleach all over you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing here. That's what the attachment's for. Got it, okay. That's got what it. I'm doing, you guys get to shake oh, it. Oh, that's what that thing was for. Mm. That's brilliant. Mm, mm. So you guys <laughs> need to shake that for a long time. We gotta shake this? it? Shake it. Okay. We'll race. Mm, all right. Back to back. <laughs> Hot shaking action. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah! Oh. We're gonna be on the sexy mead calendar. You need to shake harder than that. What? 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 <laughs> what? Oh! What? what? Oh. Is, you, is this gonna turn into cocktail? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, goodness sakes. Aruba, Jamaica, Jamaica. not Kokomo, <laughs> you son of a. So now that we have the must properly aerated, now is when we use our hydrometer to take our specific gravity reading. Again, specific gravity just tells you how much sugar there is in solution in, in the mixture. It basically is an indication of uh, how much water to other stuff ratio right, there absolutely. is. absolutely. And in this, because it. it's only honey and sugar, or honey which is most sugar, it gives us a reading for this. And the specific gravity is based on where it floats to, you're gonna tell us how much potential alcohol there is in the mixture. And then we can add more, less water, as we want to get that balance we're looking for. So you can forecast exactly how much ABV you want your drink to have rather than a rough guess. You can actually yeah. determine it. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So each yeast has a specific alcohol tolerance. So say, and these don't have it, but say these had enough for 17% alcohol in it. This yeast only goes up to about 14%. At which point it all dies right. choking on its own food. And realistically, and again, anything natural, you're never gonna have an accurate 100% reading for it. So it may stop at 12, it may go up to 15 or 16. Got it. But that's when you use the stabilizer to stop it early. The more traditional way that people tend to do, build this to only 10%, stop it, stabilize everything, then what they call back sweetening. So back sweetening is a whole other thing, like once it's done fermenting and you stabilize everything, then you add more honey or other sugars. To so flavor you, to taste. Yes, that's when you add your cherries, strawberries, whether fruits or anything else you want afterward. Got it. And it gives it a much more controlled method of doing everything. That's sweetening in the secondary or back sweetening in secondary. So Cool, so is whole... there any sweetening that you do up front as far as like putting the fruits in before? So you can sweeten in primary, which would be adding any kind of those things right now. Mm -hmm. um, the the trade-offs there are, it's again, you never know which sugar to be eaten at this point. Because if I have fructose from my fruit and then the honey sweeteners from that, it can go from either or and certain yeast will eat and certain sugars and other things like that. So it gets really artistic if you want to do it that way or hand waving if you prefer that method. Um, or you can stick very, you know, traditional, I mean, this way, this is what it worked last time and repeat the process every time. So how do we measure the specific gravity? One of the honors of siphoning. Yeah, I'll siphon. <laughs> I guess I just get this started. Yep, and you don't need much. You honestly, if you, if you cap it off. And then and then now I just and you're gonna throw this up. Stop, stop. You don't need much at all. Okay. Hey, look, I did a thing. Yeah. That was a lot easier than when we tried to siphon gasoline. We all help yeah. in our own ways. Rough estimate, so you can see a kind of flow there. 
Okay, so what is this telling us? Right okay, now? there's a couple different sides to it. So you can see right here, the specific gravity reading is right around 1.136, 1.14. And on the side right next to it, it has a potential alcohol percentage. That's the estimated, oh. got it. Right. Oh, it's so, right there on it. Yep. So generally you'll re record this number and then the difference between the numbers gives that because this is a potential alcohol, not actual alcohol. Sure. So, so right now the potential alcohol, it's reading as how much? It's right around 18%. If you have yeast that's got the stuff to make it all yeah. the way to 18%. If you have like a champagne yeast, and you can use like a champagne yeast, which gets really, really dry, so it can hit that 18, 20% okay. fairly consistently. This is gonna stop around 14 most likely. So that'd leave us at 4%. And then you'd have residual sugars of 1.030. Cause again, if you look at that 4%, 30 right there, that's like, and I know from just doing this that 1.030 is a really, really sweet wine, like dessert wine, if not slightly sweeter. Oh, wow. So okay. that's, that's way sweeter than I want this to be. So I'm gonna add a bit more water to this. So the number you're trying to hit is how much? 1.120. Could I drop this hydrometer just right in our mixtures to see? Yeah. Or, or do you do we need to put it yeah, in, you definitely in this can. tube? You can probably get that back out. Like this one, this bucket here, I don't do that, but this bucket you can see is a bit short. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So Whereas I can do this it for is, mine. Okay. So with yours, you guys can definitely just drop them in there and you're gonna have a lot of issues because of the bubbles. Oh, got it. Wow. Oh, yeah. So you're about 1.13. Both of yours, I'd just bring it back up to that fill line. Okay, with water? Add yeah, more water? Yeah, once, once you're at the end of that. Okay. But you're, yeah, definitely welcome just to check out what the differences are and they should be about the same. His will be a little bit lower because he has a bit more water in it. Yeah. 1.12? Yeah, I'd put around 1.12. Okay. Something like that. So that, that so would I'd be- So I'd stop right about here just so we can add the yeast and shake it up some more and- So you think that's good, 1.12? Yeah, I mean, you can just top it off a little more if you want. Entirely, entirely up to you. This is your- My batch. Your, your baby. Okay. Put a little bit more water in there. If you want some really, really sweet water, you're welcome to try some of that. <laughs> no, just make sure he does anything. Drink, okay. we'll drink anything that looks like mead. Oh, that is very sweet. Yeah. All right, so give him a little bit of shake just to mix everything back up one more time. All right, we're getting ready to add the yeast. Yup. One of these is good for five gallons. So we'll want to share. Use about half, yeah. Okay. And I'm gonna use about half of one of my own as well, just to make sure. So theoretically, we could pour this entire thing in there and all it would do is what, increase the rate at which yeah. it, it, it ferments? Yep. Okay, so that's about half of it. There you go, sir. So do we shake it up or just leave it right on top? Um, shake it up a little bit more. I don't know that you gave me. Oh, oh, did I? Did, 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 did he short you use I, I, did, he short <laughs> you? did he short shift you? I yeah. did. I, I assume so. Yeah, I think I think so. A little bit anyway. And realize there's hardly any left. Brian just goes. That's half. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and and worth noting, different yeasts have different ways of starting. Some want to be started up separately, so you dump the yeast into a bowl. It warm more water, let it sit in that, let it run from there. That was the big criticism we got on the Pruno episode is that we didn't activate the yeast yeah. when we used the baker's right. yeast. Uh, yeah. Whereas like the, the brewer's yeast worked just fine yeah. the moment yeah, we threw it. Yeah, different yeast have different things of doing uh, it. Yeah, that was the big complaint we got on Pruno. <laughs> okay, now shake it. Yep, With just a little bit, just to get it mixed back in. Next thing we're gonna worry about is creating some kind of one-way valve. And yes. you've got an actual stopper that I've will- I've got a stopper let the, well, the CO2 come thing, out. We're gonna give you guys some yeast nutrients Oh, in, in the way of raisins. Oh, right on. So take, take a handful of raisins. This is just enough extra residual sugars in there just to help make sure the yeast has stuff going on and doesn't struggle starting off. For you guys, we have a very, very fancy airlock system. Yeah! Some balloons. Poke some holes in it with this handy little pin. Do you poke first and then? Yeah, uh, poke some holes in it. Okay. And then you're just gonna wrap it over the top. And this is your really simple airlock. So this is not a perfect seal, but it, uh, assuming that, that there's CO2 coming up, yep. it's it this thing in place, and, and then, then it, comes it out. just leaks out. Yep, absolutely. What temperature does the yeast like to chew on though? This? In the 65 to 70 range. Oh, well that's perfect. <laughs> so my airlock is slightly more uh, standard. Yep. It's a two part system here. Fill it up with water, it flows the middle bob up. And then when air comes up, the bob comes up and you see the holes in the bottom of that. We right. used one of those on Pruno, did we not? Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay. And just like that, and as you can see, as I push down, this pops up and releases. Perfect. Now both, both of these methods take a couple of months, you say? Or two um, weeks? Or? So fermentation should be done in about two weeks. Oh. However, you don't really want to, you can drink it at that point. It's not gonna be very good. 
Mead is one of those things. That's a challenge. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. It's like, Sorry, but I want to drink it. It's, it's, tell me it's got the booze. not going to tell me not to drink my mead. Yeah, right? Uh, describe it as young. It's got this really strong alcohol taste to it still. It's not going to be very smooth. It's not going to be very good. And the longer you let it sit and mellow out, the better it's going to be. So there's no more fermentation going on. Right, there's no more fermentation. But, it's, but there's like f uh, flavor coloring. Happening. Sure. Right. And it'll, it'll smooth out that, that strong alcohol taste will slowly disappear over time. Okay. Does it matter whether or not light is shining on it? Would light have a sterilizing effect? Light Would it be better to put it in it, a dark it, area? It is better off in a dark area. Okay. Yeah. Cool dark space is generally the... Cool. So so this is why your equipment is better because you've got opaque yeah. structures on there to yep. protect it, whereas this will... But I mean, you, can, light will you, can, you can wrap that with a towel. So you will want to check on that, make sure everything's looking good, looking fine. With, with a setup like this, you're looking for some sort of bubbling action. Your guys just want to make sure those balloons inflate. It'll be that position permanently. Okay. Of just... As just the CO2 yeah, always as goes as it bubbles on out. out. Yeah. Let's just set them down here. One of the other important things you guys want to do after that, that I'll be doing with this one after a couple of weeks is called racking it. Once the yeast is done fermenting, get it off of the meat itself. Mm -hmm. So all the sediment is going to settle at the bottom because the yeast is going to die, it's going to fall off, things like that. So you're going to want to get it out of this container into a different one. So you can do it with the siphon. With those, you can kind of just wing it and dump it into something else, another gallon jug, and let it age in that. After a couple of weeks. Yeah. So when it's done fermenting, you know, that two to four week time span, whatever. Oh, when the balloon isn't inflating anymore. But yours, it's going to always be inflated. There's always going to be a little bit of off-gassing, but it's, it's going to stop off significantly. But about three weeks from now, when yeah. we decide we're done. Yeah. And and can you just, you could just uh, taste that to know yeah. if, it, if it's right? Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll be how sweet you do or don't want it, how alcohol tastes. You, really want or not. you don't really need all the fancy things involved. For uh, what we made, what's the prime window for us to drink from it? The longer you let it sit after you rack it, the better it's going to taste. As I said, the longer you let it sit, the smoother it's going to taste, the alcohol flavor is going to go away. Uh, my personal minimum is about two months before I'll let other people start drinking it and trying it. Like, I'll obviously try it beforehand to make sure it's going where I want it to, but I'm not going to, like, here, try this to people who don't know what they're doing before that two or three month window has passed just because it's going to taste a lot like that alcohol jet fuel kind of flavor to it until that alcohol flavor matures away. So in the meantime, do you have a do we have a preview of what yeah, it's going to taste got, like? I've got, I've got a bunch of different things that you guys can try out. Yeah, so let's go. Let's go okay. some of that. Let's go. Start off with a fairly dry mead that's been back sweetened with cherry. So back dry means that you let the yeast pretty much eat all the sugars yes. and then you sweeten it after the fact, giving it a flavor right. color profile, right? Yep. Absolutely. How did you sweeten it with cherries? Did you put actual cherries in there? Yep. Or, okay. I took I took way too long and way too many cherries and cut them in half and pitted them and. Oh. Yes. He named each one. I did. <laughs> and he, he writes them letters. <laughs> he sings to them at night. Dear Edgar, <laughs> you are delicious. So I I traditionally don't like super sweet fruity stuff. So you, give me just a little bit of this. Oh, this action. is dry. You'll probably enjoy that more. I assume it's the same rules as we learned from the Beerus, where you want to appreciate the color, look at the cloudiness. Yep, uh, yep. Oh, sure, yeah. Smell the aromatics. Oh, this does have a dry, almost a, almost wine-like Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Nose. Definitely smell the alcohol in there. Yeah. Do you know what the ABV on this is? Offhand, no. I think it's sitting at least 12%, though. Okay. Wow, that is way more dry. I thought it was gonna be so sweet, and it's not. Oh, I like this a lot more than I, I thought I would. I have never had a mead like this. It, it's like a very dry red wine. Until today, it didn't occur to me that you could have meads that weren't the clear, kind of golden, right, almost right. syrupy type of drink. And this is a dramatic departure and is really good. And you just made this. Yeah. It's fascinating. And so I assume that there's Pure experimentation a over a lot of time, right? Yeah. In my imagination, you would make a whole bunch of these at the same time, changing little things all at once. And so as long as everything's labeled, you can understand, yeah. oh, this is going to give it a drier profile that. and so on. Right. Pl I said, there's plenty of information online about different yeasts, where their alcohol tolerances is, how they react, where they do things. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So. I like that quite a bit. Next one is going to be way more traditional, definitely that sweeter side of things. It is just straight honey on, on the first batch of it. But I've actually got different additions to this one in these two gallons. Oh, okay. okay. So all three of these are essentially the same formula. These are just you back, said sweetened. back sweetened differently. Right. Well, back, these are not even sweetened. They're, already, they're just flavored differently. Got it. Oh, okay. So they've got different flavors in there. One of them is chorizo. <laughs> chorizo? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Here's Miga's flavored. <laughs> Miga's flavored mead. Yeah. Everyone needs a breakfast mead, right? A breakfast mead, yeah. So, so this is. See, that oh, looks like mead. Yeah. Right. To, yeah. to me. This is unintentionally way sweeter. So the nose on this one, uh, a sour tang to the nose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but you can tell 
Man, I don't know. I don't know what I'm experiencing. Look at how syrupy it is, though. Like, That's, you can tell. Like, sticks to the sides. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's sweet. That's just like we Ooh. had that honey water. Um, I can't <laughs> yeah. even detect the uh, uh, the alcohol in there. It seems like this would fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> that one tastes like it's got a lot more alcohol. I don't know that it does. <laughs> <laughs> it probably doesn't. I mean, because that one had kind of a bite to it, and this one is just ambrosia, right? Oh, that's, 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 that's but a, it's too sweet for you. Yeah, you say I mean, ambrosia, I say ten. danger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, this is what I'm more accustomed to carrying around the Renaissance yeah. Festival, right? Yeah. Dangerous. These are the same things that we just drank. The same exact thing. They've been sitting on spices for, I want to say, at least a month, probably a bit longer. Okay. I've not even tried these yet. Oh, wow. wow. Okay. So this is with mulling spices. What are mulling spices? Kind of like when you have hot apple cider. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's a big box at like H-E-B that says mulling spices yeah, on it. Yeah, it's like Got cloves it. <laughs> and cinnamon. And, and allspice like that. and things like that, yeah. Do you ever drink mead warm? Yes. I read how it's pretty common to put mulling spices in there and mull the mead like yeah. you do a cider. Yep. Oh, oh ambient temperature. man, it smells like Christmas in here. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. This is like liquid Christmas. That pungent aroma sort of is like a warning. Like that that other one, the straight honey, I feel like I might go too fast. This one feels like it's going to slow me down. That you need to sip it. Yeah. Still sweet. Boy, I like that spice a lot. It's yeah. got a bite. That gives it a much more interesting profile. Yeah. It's not an alcohol bite, but it is a bite. Yeah. Oh, well, that's great. What's your favorite so far? I, to my surprise, the uh, the cherry dry. Yeah, I me think. too. I think mostly because that one was unexpected. Mm -hmm. So this next one is essentially the same thing as the base that we drank here. Right. Just like this other one, but instead of mulling spices, we have... Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla! Sarsaparilla! Sioux City Sioux Sarsaparilla. City Sarsaparilla. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> What's happening down here? Oh, that's the sarsaparilla. Oh, Jesus. In, in cheesecloth. Oh, got it. <laughs> it, it does look like it's alive. It looks like it's in formaldehyde it's, or something. It's like, <laughs> this is some sort of bio experiment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it turns and looks at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it knocks on the glass. Yeah. The... <laughs> it says, my family, <laughs> do they live? <laughs> Open your mind. <laughs> Drink of me and no eternity. <laughs> it's that scene from Poltergeist 2 when he drinks the worm. Oh, that's a <laughs> yeah. That Geiger thing comes out, the Geiger. Oh. So what is sarsaparilla? Hmm. A root, and it's kin to root beer. You can use it to make a root beer flavor. Oh, that's Some, wild. Somewhere, that's somewhere, what I'm smelling. Somewhere yeah. between root beer and cream soda. That's wild. Like mixed with some anise and clove, I think. Yeah. Get more root beer -y. And it looks just like the other one. Man, that's fantastic. Oh, wow. Dramatically different from the last one. Much more subtle. Uh, the other one just came on screaming Christmas. This one whispers, Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> also very good. I like this one a lot. That's interesting. This is a hobby where you can easily experiment. Oh, yeah. And just try all sorts and it's, of stuff. it's fairly safe. Like, like yeah. I mean, outside of the fact that you're drinking you know, other, other than being alcohol. Yeah, 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 exactly. I just assumed that there were a couple of variants, but there's really infinite amounts of mead that you yeah. can craft at home. Yep. I'm already feeling a little floaty. Oh, you really? It's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. It's, it, it'll sneak <laughs> up on you. It's strong. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna, you have a little more? Uh, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to toast to this gentleman. These were all really good. Here, yeah, thank uh, you. to Anthony. Thank you so much for expanding our horizons and taking us into a brave new world. Toasting with empty glass. <laughs> Bad luck, man. Oh, that's good. This was going to be the one episode with Anthony where I wouldn't sweat. <laughs> Wrong. I kind of wish you'd come in, the, in your armor. <laughs> <laughs>